So one of the first things that you have to understand when you're learning to program is how variables and assignment work. So the thing to realize is that variables are like boxes, they're storage spaces, they're the place you can store information during a program while it's running, but they're boxes with a difference. So they're boxes with both a photocopier and a shredder built into them. So how does that work? Well, let's see. So each of my volunteers is going to act as a variable. They're going to hold one of their boxes. So if each of the volunteers takes a box, that box is able to store things as we'll see. We need a way of telling them apart. So each variable is given a name. So the first variable is color two. We also will need a variable for this program called temp, and we'll also need a variable called color one. So we've got three storage spaces, each with its own name. And when we want to know which storage space we're talking about, then we use its name to refer to it. So if we look at this program, the first line in the program says that color one gets value red. So an assignment, even in some languages uses the sign equal, the symbol equal, to mean assignment. What is that equal? It's not a mathematical equal. It's not saying two things are the same. It's a command to do something. It, so color one equals red actually should be pronounced color one gets the value red. And what does it mean? We put the value red into color one. So where is color one? Well, we find the name and the command says put red in it. So the box is able to store a value and it can store one value at a time. And at the moment it's storing the value red. The other boxes I've not put anything in yet. So they're still empty. Now in a program, a program is a series of instructions and you execute them one at a time in the order they're given. So that was the first line of the program. It's the first instruction we follow. The second instruction in this program is color two gets the value green. So I'd find color two and I put the value green in it. So, so far they are just acting like boxes. We can just put something in it and they're stored there. And if I want it back again, I can use the name and go and find the right box and then look in it to see what's there. Now, the third command, this is very similar. It's now saying temp gets the value of color one. So now it's not being given an actual value from somewhere else. It's actually saying temp gets the value that's in color one at the moment. And this is where it's not exactly like a box that you're just putting things in and taking them out because this doesn't mean temp gets the value in color one and color one no longer has it. This is where the, the boxes are acting like copiers. So temp gets the value of color one. The first thing I have to do is go to color one and find out what's in it. So I go and I look what's in it, it's red. And I make a copy of what's in it. So I've got a copy of red, but color one is keeping exactly that same value. And what am I doing with this copy? I'm putting it in temp. So we're not taking the value out. The box is acting like a copier. It copies the value. We've got a new copy and it's the copy that I can then put in temp and store that. So we've now got two values there. The next command is color one gets the value color two. So I go to color two. I find that green is in there. So I make a copy of color two. And where do I put that? I have to put it in color one. So we put it in color one but a variable can only hold one value at a time. So it's a box that's only got enough space for one value. So when I put a new value in, we lose the old value. So this value is completely lost. It's actually destroyed. So what happens to this value red that was in color one and has just been displaced? Well, actually it's completely destroyed. So what do we mean? Really destroyed, nobody can get it again. So it's ripped into shreds. You know, it doesn't exist anymore, completely torn up. It's eaten, jumped on. It really doesn't exist anymore. All the bits are gone. You cannot get that value back again. It's gone. 
it doesn't exist. We're now left with that green is in colour one, the old value that was there is gone. We move on to the next line of the program, colour two gets the value temp. And what happens there? Essentially the same thing. Colour two gets the value temp, so we have to go to temp, find out what's in it, take a copy of that, put that into colour two. So that means we lose the old value in colour two, put a new value in, is red, and the value that we've lost there has been destroyed again. So this is completely destroyed. So what happens to the value green that's just been displaced from the box colour 2? Well, just as before, it's completely destroyed. You cannot get it and use it again. It doesn't exist anymore. So just like before, I tear it up, except I'm not going to because my budget doesn't run to it. I'm just going to put it aside so that I can use it again later. But in reality, in the programme, it doesn't exist anymore. It's completely gone. And at that point, we're left with the variables, colour 1 has green in it, temp has red in it, and colour 2 has red in it. Whereas at the start, colour 1, we started by putting red in, and colour 2 we'd put green in. So we've moved the values around, but done so by moving them elsewhere. That shows how variables work. So each variable is like a box, but it's a box that can only hold one thing at once. And when you put something in it, you destroy the thing that's there. So it's like a box with a shredder. It shreds things whenever you try and put something new in. The old thing gets shredded. But it's also a box with a copier. When you go and look in the box, you don't actually take the value out. You can look and you make copies of the things that are there and put the copies into other variables or do um, operations on them. So variables are boxes with shredders and copiers connected to them.